Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Simon Elliott. Um, I'm an archaeologist, historian and broadcaster uh, with a huge passion for everything to do with the classical world. Uh, my professional background was as a journalist and in public relations, but in my 40s, I decided to follow my dream. So I did a couple of master's degrees, one in war studies at KCL, one in archaeology at UCL and um, segue the latter very nicely into um, uh, doing a PhD in archaeology and classics at the University of Kent in Canterbury, where my focus was on how Roman London was built and the military's role therein. And that inspired me to begin a publishing career to the extent where I have now published uh, 12 books, uh, appeared on about 20 odd television programs as an expert on the classical world, do numerous podcasts, which I love doing, as you can gather. And uh, my next book is The Wonderful Ancient Greeks at War Through the Fantastic Casemate. Most people who know my writing, which includes a couple of bestsellers, uh, global bestsellers and award winners indeed, will know that I, I, I write prolifically about the Roman world. Um, but actually, my entry point to the classical world was always the world of the ancient Greeks. So I can remember drawing my first picture of a, a Greek hoplite when I was about five years old, um, which would have been in the uh, early 1970s uh, with a wax crayon on some old fashioned computer paper. And I've never looked back since, so I can uh, remember by my first uh, toy soldiers, which were ancient Greeks. That's before moving on to the airfix Romans and ancient Britons, of course. Um, and then becoming a war gamer. And I'm currently actually the president of the Society of Ancients, which is the, the international body for people who war game in the ancient period. Um, but my entry point was always the Greeks, to the extent where my son is called Alexander. war is a very bold attempt if i may say so by by me to tackle the entire narrative of the ancient greek world from the onset of minoan civilization on crete and in the aegean who by the way weren't greek to uh the sort of ending of the dominance of the hellenistic kingdoms with the rise of the might of rome um uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean and the advent of the Parthian Empire in the um, Middle East and Near East. Uh, so my ending point for the book is about 146 BC. So the big difference with this book is that it's an enormous undertaking. It's effectively, to my mind, a one-stop shop. And I remember growing up being absolutely uh, amazed about how good books like Peter Connolly's wonderful um, Greece and Rome at War were. This is my attempt at that for this generation so it's an attempt at the defining book on the ancient greeks at war for our generation covering the entirety of the chronology of the ancient greeks in conflict you know what's it's a fantastic question actually i find it easier to write books about the world of ancient rome simply because i have a lot of the information and intellectual property actually there sort of at the forefront of my brain all the time it's sort of what i live and breathe so i can rattle off the list of roman emperors i can talk about the good ones and bad ones i can talk about the levels of roman society um, i can then use that information to take people on tours of the mediterranean world which i do for Dante travels um, so it's there right in the forefront of my brain whereas the ancient greeks at war although it is still of massive interest in mine isn't really there in the front of my sort of thoughts as much as the Romans. So therefore, to write Ancient Greeks of War, I had to go back to um, sort of base one, as it were, and start my own research again. And what I found myself doing was challenging received wisdoms, which I'd assumed were right or I'd grown up with and just incorporated to my thinking of the ancient world, challenging them and coming up with new narratives. So so when and, and one of the key takeouts I got from doing that is how relevant both culturally and in other ways the world of the ancient greeks especially in conflict was so for example if you look at taking the latter if you look at the the, the vast geography that the ancient greeks sort of engaged in in terms of diplomacy and later conflict um, you're talking all the way through to afghanistan which is very relevant to the world in which we live in today of course with alexander the great and later the uh, greco uh, bactrian kingdom there or kingdoms there 
Um, but if you were to look at sort of modern culture, you know, people are obsessed in terms of modern culture with things like Game of Thrones or Tolkien. And yet, if you look at any aspect of the ancient Greeks at war, you look at the Peloponnesian Wars and the amazing characters uh, that were involved there. Um, Al Alcibiades, for example. Uh, if you were to look at the, the astonishing story of Philip II and Alexander the Great, I always think, by the way, Philip II is rather underplayed by many people. He played a key role in the future success of his son, Alexander. These are stories which are fit for any age. And yet, as far as we can tell, based on the sources we have in, uh, in the history, historical sources and the archaeological data, they're real. So it's not fantasy, it's real. It actually is better than the 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 fiction which is written about sort of things you know to the, to this day so it's an it's, it's the whole story of the ancient greeks of war is absolutely amazing oh i've got another really good question what's most surprising about the book well they'll that um i i think that the absolute breadth so we're talking about if i give you a very brief chapter breakdown we're talking about the the, the the civilizations of the, the of Crete and the Aegean to start with. So we begin with the Minoans, then the Mycenaeans, then the late Bronze Age collapse, and then the advent of um, uh, the Sea Peoples. And then I actually talk about the, the Philistines, actually, and there is a link there, but people will have to buy the book and read it to see what the link is. I'll then move on to uh, uh, through the various early phases of Greek culture on the mainland through to classical Greece, where I then consider uh, the Greco-Persian Wars, the Peloponnesian Wars, the conflicts between uh, Thebes and Sparta, the rise of Macedonia under Philip II. Then there's a really fantastic, to my mind, and I loved writing it, chapter on Alexander the Great, which is the most up-to-date take you'll get anywhere, uh, probably for about five years, I would hope, on, on the story of Alexander the Great with some really interesting new nuances by me. And then we move on to the astonishing story of the Wars of the Successors, where the real sort of like stories come, come out of some astonishing. Imagine the scene when Alexander the Great's dying in uh, 323 BC in Babylon in a dimly lit sort of be lit bedchamber. And, and, and all the cast of characters who would later become the, the leading successor, they're all gathered around him, all staring across the sort of like the, the bed with a dying form of Alexander there, warily looking at each other, working out who's going to make the next move, who's going to become the leader, etc. You know, this is better than fiction, and yet it is true. I consider myself to be honoured and fortunate and favoured to be able to not only use my own imagery with photographs taken and illustrations uh, from my travels in the ancient Greek world, which is this astonishing sort of geography from the Western Mediterranean all the way through to the Punjab and Central Asia. But also I've been able to source some astonishing plates, colour plates, not just from one amazing artist, but from three. So, so I've been able to secure some wonderful plates from Johnny Shoemate, from my good friend Graham Sumner, but also, and this is where I feel truly honoured, through the estate of the great Peter Connolly, remembering my reference to his ancient uh, Greece and Roman war, I've sourced some of the plates I grew up with. Um, of Alexander the Great crossing the Granicus River in his first battle against the Achaemenid Persians, um, of Leonidas leading the um, Spartans in their doomed battle against the Persians at Thermopylae, uh, of Alexander again tackling the uh, giant of a man Indian king Porus and his war elephants with his phalanx. These are images which I grew up with as a kid and uh, they're, they're, they they are as good as anything you'll find today, and that's with absolute due reverence and deference to, to Johnny and, and uh, Graham. Um, but they're iconic images. So this book features not only absolutely brand new colour plates, but also plates which were actually drawn by the great, the late great Peter Connolly and, and their images, you know, which are very close to my heart. So I, I really consider myself honoured to have had the opportunity through the great casemate to lavishly, lavishly illustrate this book.